competition between the major energy consumers to forge exclusive or privileged ties with their major suppliers or prospective suppliers in order to ensure that they will have adequate supplies even if it means that other countries do not, what we call a zero-sum competition. This zero-sum competition can take diplomatic forms, that's fine, you know, presidents traveling around the world, meeting with heads of state, offering them all kinds of diplomatic goodies, recognition, and state visits to Washington or Beijing, all kinds of treaties of cooperation and friendship and so forth. Just this past year, uh, China hosted almost every head of state in Africa at the China Africa Forum in Beijing, the largest gathering of African heads of state ever. All of this, I think, prompted by China's effort to gain access to African oil. That's fine. But increasingly, this is taking a military form, and that's what has to worry us. Just as the United States and the Soviet Union competed with one another during the Cold War period for influence in the Third World by using arms and military assistance to favored clients in the Third World, so today, in the very same way, we see that the United States and China are using arms and military assistance as instruments of influence and competition in the oil producing areas as a way to uh, gain competitive advantage in their pursuit of oil and natural gas in the same areas, in Africa, the Middle East, and in Central Asia. Just this summer, for example, the United States announced a $20 billion arms package to Saudi Arabia and other members of the Gulf Cooperation Council, Kuwait and the United Arab Emirates. And that is only the most recent of a long line of arms sales to those countries in return for oil. The United States has also stepped up its arms trade, arms transfers to major oil producers in Africa and to the Caspian Sea area, including Angola and Nigeria, Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan, also leading oil producers. Likewise, China has become a major arms supplier to Su Sudan, Nigeria, and Iran, and is competing with the United States in deliveries of weapons to other African nations. Both countries, moreover, are accompanying the supply of arms to these countries with deliveries of military support services, including training, technical assistance, advisory services, and intelligence support. As if to symbolize its growing military role in Africa, an area which the United States long ignored, the Department of Defense last month, just last month, established the U.S. Africa Command, AFRICOM. This is the first regional military command created by the United States in 27 years. The last regional command created by the Department of Defense was the U.S. Central Command, which covers the area of the Persian Gulf Central Asia and North Africa. That was established in response to the Carter Doctrine of 1980, which says the flow of oil from the Persian Gulf is a vital interest of the United States, and to protect that flow, the United States will use any means necessary, including military force. And because in 1980, the United States did not have forces earmarked for the Persian Gulf area, President Carter created the Central Command to uh, control and, and to deploy U.S. forces 
in that area. So I think it's highly significant that President Bush this year, just this year, consider the historic uh, significance of this. President Bush created an Africa command to cover uh, military forces in Africa. And this command has a number of responsibilities, but one of them is to oversee the US military aid mission in Nigeria, which has among its functions to uh, oversee, to assist uh, the, uh, the Nigerian military in its efforts to crush the insurgency in the Niger Delta region of southern Nigeria, which is the leading uh, oil producing area of Nigeria, which has been earmarked by the United States as its major alternative source of oil to the Persian Gulf. So you see this, this the, the symbolic importance of, of this. China is also providing military support services to its oil suppliers in the developing world. For example, it has been charged with assisting the Sudanese government in conducting a brutal scorched earth campaign aimed at driving the SPLA, the Sudanese People's Liberation Army, and its civilian supporters from the area in southern Sudan where the China National Petroleum Corporation is the leading producer in Sudan's oil fields. China is also using the Shanghai Cooperation Organization as a vehicle to provide arms and military support to energy producing countries in Central Asia, notably Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. This pattern has two worrisome implications. First of all, it's increasing the flow of arms and military technological capacities into areas that are already deeply divided along ethnic, religious, and political lines, increasing the risk that governments will rely on force rather than persuasion or compromise to resolve internal or external disputes.